this young boy king became one of the most powerful symbols in Egyptological history. This is a teenager, a teenager disease. Ah. Yes, maybe 12 or 13 years, up to 19 years. Sometimes it's great pain. He couldn't do anything, even walking on his foot. Egypt is famously known for the succession of its pharaohs. As these pharaohs passed on, they were succeeded by other pharaohs as their tradition is. However, there was a young pharaoh boy named King Tutankhamun who died mysteriously, and there have been a lot of intriguing controversial theories and speculations surrounding his death. The whole body is cut into pieces, hundreds of fractures, probably when they tried to remove the heavy golden mask that was stuck to the chest and the abdomen of King Tut. So what is the truth? How did he die? And what killed him? Keep watching as we unravel the mysteries. The mysterious passing on of the young king Tutankhamun has caused an unusual frenzy, as there have been many speculations surrounding his demise. Some suspected he was murdered, perhaps poisoned, but modern technologies like 3D scanning eventually revealed that the powerful king was actually in poor health, and he even had a fractured leg. So maybe the frail king tumbled from one of the chariots in his tomb. Other enduring mysteries surrounding the king's life include questions over whether he ever ruled as an independent monarch, given that he passed away around the age of 18, or if he was more of a puppet of the powerful figures in his court. King Tutankhamun, also known as King Tut for short, became a ruler of his people, the ancient Egypt in 1332 BC at the age of nine. He was born as Tutankhaten, which means the living image of Aten, the sun god that his father Akhenaten worshipped. Educated in the way of Atenism and learned to read and write hieroglyphs and cuneiform, he ruled the country at the time of conflict when battles over land raged between Egypt and the neighboring kingdom of Nubia. He also inherited a troubled kingdom because many Egyptians were unhappy with his father's religious reforms and foreign policy. Considered too young to rule, he was guided by two powerful advisors, namely Ai, the Grand Vizier, who was believed to be his maternal grandfather, and Horemheb, the commander-in-chief of the army. He decided to change his name to Tutankhamun, meaning the living image of Amun, the chief god of the traditional Egyptian pantheon. This was a pointer to the fact that he wanted to restore the old religion and appease the priests and people who had suffered under his Akhenaten's rule. Having moved his capital back to Thebes, he ordered the repair of the damaged temples and statues of the old gods. He also tried to improve Egypt's relations with its neighbors who had been neglected or attacked by Akhenaten. The young leader, however, died at the age of 18, nearly a decade after coming into power. He didn't accomplish much as he faced many challenges such as plagues, droughts, rebellions, and conspiracies. It was believed that he may have also been a tool in the hands of his advisors who had their own agenda and ambitions. His death was believed to be mysterious and the source was not discovered for a long time. Some scholars believed that his unexpected death led to a rushed burial process. The mystery is further deepened by the lack of contemporary records detailing his death, leaving a void that has been filled with theories, hypotheses, and even fiction accounts. Historians didn't know much about Toot until 1992, when a British archaeologist named Howard Carter discovered Tut's tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. King Tut's body was laid to rest in a nest of three coffins placed in a stone coffin, which was covered by four overlapping box-like shrines. After the mummy was revealed, archaeologists got to work as they tried to pry his body from the sticky sacred oils that coated the inside of his coffin. But such rough handling damaged the mummy and made it tough to tell what exactly led to Tut's death. So what exactly happened? What shocking revelations were made by archaeologists about his tomb? The tomb of Tutankhamun is among the most iconic ancient Egyptian sites. It is reported by Tom Mueller, an expert, to be arguably the richest find in Egyptian archaeology, and arguably all of archaeology. In November 1992, according to reports, a British archaeologist and Egyptologist named Howard Carter discovered the almost intact tomb of Tutankhamun. 
It was reported to be almost intact because robbers had broken into the tomb at least twice by the time of its discovery and had carted away small items, making it not completely intact. Some scholars deduced after observing the wear on his war chariots, bows and arrows, and other grave goods in his tomb that he was an active young man who reportedly hunted hippopotami and even led his troops in battle. However, the cause of King Tut's death is somewhat still unspecified and has been the center of discussion among many experts. Notably, some research has indicated that the young man was physically disabled and suffered from several other notable health issues during his short life. He reportedly had clubfoot, a condition that would have required him to use a cane to walk. The argument is still on, as experts are debating how big the role of a leg injury and subsequent infection, malaria, genetic disease, genetic disease, and other ailments played in his demise. One of the theories that state that the boy King was murdered has been disproved, even though there are conspicuous signs that King Tut suffered blunt force trauma to the head, which was said to have been caused by normal decomposition processes by experts. This has caused a significant point of contention among historians and forensic experts as they struggle to know if the fracture was the result of a violent altercation, a deliberate blow meant to end the young king's life, or it could have been an incidental injury probably obtained during the mummification process or the excavation of the tomb by Howard Carter's team. According to experts, the family tree of the young pharaoh also contains significant mysteries that are yet to be resolved. DNA research is currently being conducted with results expected to come in by the end of the year, which may potentially be able to finally solve the problem of his parentage. The question of whether Akhenaten, the heretic pharaoh, was really his father, as many claimed, is still not known. The reason for this DNA analysis is to help clarify some outstanding questions about his death and cause of death. His tomb's discovery, filled with treasures and artifacts, provided a glimpse into the life of a young ruler who was both a political figure and a divine entity in the eyes of his people. But that's not all. It was also suspected that the process of inbreeding among Egyptian royalty could also be the reason for his early demise. But could the historical practice of inbreeding among Egyptian royalty have a hand in King Tut's death? In ancient Egypt, Inbreeding was particularly associated with the royal families in their efforts to maintain a pure royal bloodline and preserve the divine nature of the pharaoh. Inbreeding involves the mating of close relatives, which increases the likelihood of genetic disorders. It is reported to have adverse effects on the health and genetic diversity of the royal family members. Genetic studies conducted on King Tut's mummy and also scientific studies including DNA analysis have shown that his parents were likely siblings, causing the child pharaoh to suffer from several genetic disorders. This close genetic relationship would have amplified the risk of inheriting genetic abnormalities which could have affected his health. This level of inbreeding could have contributed to his early death. Consequently, some potential health issues associated with inbreeding include physical deformities, which could have made him more accident-prone, weakened immune systems, which could have made him susceptible to infections and diseases, and genetic disorders that could affect his health greatly. King Tut's mummy showed several physical abnormalities such as a cleft palate and a club foot which could be related to his inbred lineage. The degenerative bone disease probably caused Tut's foot to swell from inflammation and made it impossible for him to walk normally. Scientists have also in the past suggested that he may have suffered from inherited temporal lobe epilepsy, which is suspected to be why the king and some of his relatives were reportedly having religious visions. A Washington Post article explains that people with a form of epilepsy when seizures begin in the brain's temporal lobe are known to experience hallucinations and religious visions, all attributed to inbreeding. The practice of royal incest was not uncommon in ancient Egypt, as it was believed to preserve the sacred bloodline and divine nature of the pharaohs. However, the impact of inbreeding on his health and early death remains a plausible supposition, but not confirmed as it is challenging to determine a single cause of death from historical and archaeological evidence alone. While inbreeding is a plausible theory, it is just one of the several potential factors that could have contributed to his death. So was he brutally murdered, as also asserted by many? Let's discuss how ancient Egyptian royalty and politics could have contributed to his death. 
It is also believed that Egyptian royalty and politics could have played a role in King Tutankhamun's death. King Tut ascended the throne at a very young age, so his inexperience and youthfulness made him vulnerable in the complex world of Egyptian politics. It is asserted that powerful figures within the royal court, such as the Vizier A, might have manipulated him to advance their own interests, potentially putting him in precarious situations. More so, ancient Egyptian history is full of power struggles among royal family members and court officials. Consequently, the struggle for control and influence in the court might have led to political conspiracies and threats against his life and reign. Also, there was strong resistance to the religious changes made by King Tut. King Tut's predecessor, Akhenaten, had introduced extreme religious changes, emphasizing the worship of Athen, the sun god. However, upon his death, King Tut made a shift back to traditional polytheistic beliefs. This abrupt transition might have met strong resistance from those who had come to embrace the Athen religion, leading to tension and crisis within the court. Reports also had it that Tut's wife might have wanted him out of the picture. This is mainly attributed to her actions after his demise, especially her desperate pleas to foreign rulers was reportedly a hint at a complicated web of palace intrigues, which made people question if she was an unwilling participant in a larger conspiracy or if she was trying to escape a fate orchestrated by other foreign factions. According to reports, the 18th dynasty was a period of geopolitical tensions, so Egypt's interactions with neighboring powers such as the Hittites and Mitanni were marked by diplomacy, squabbles, and intrigues. There is now a question of whether a foreign power could have seen an edge in destabilizing Egypt by getting rid of the young ruler. This is yet to be known. Other theories suggest that King Tut's death was as a result of a chariot accident. The CT scan conducted also showed that the chest wall and front part of the rib cage were missing. This has caused serious arguments among experts. While some argue that this might have been the result of the embalming process, others believe that it could be the evidence that depicts a traumatic injury, for instance being crushed by a chariot. Studies have shown that chariots played an important role in ancient Egyptian society, particularly among the royalty and the military. This is because they were represented as symbols of power and prestige and were also used for warfare, hunting, and sport. So it is believed that King Tut, being a young and adventurous ruler, might have taken part in chariot riding, which was an exercise for pharaohs. This made the possibility of a chariot accident more believable, especially when Howard discovered King Tut's tomb in 1922, where he found six dismantled chariots, each designed for different purposes, including war and ceremonial use. It is now believed that the ancient Egyptians may have considered a chariot death an ill-fated event not fitting for a pharaoh's legacy, hence, they could have deliberately left out these details from the historical records. This theory has, however, caused controversies, as some factions have argued that the young ruler had a clubfoot, which made it unlikely for him to ride a chariot. And this has encouraged researchers to look elsewhere for answers regarding his death. Consequently, Imaging photos of the king's mummy have shown signs of severe bone necrosis, especially in his knee joints. This condition occurs when bone tissue dies due to the lack of blood supply. So it is believed that this could have been the result of traumatic injury or a genetic condition. But given the absence of any recorded history of significant injuries, the latter seemed more convincing. That's not all, as there is another compelling piece of evidence that comes from the descriptions of the young pharaoh in various sculptures and artifacts. These representations show King Tut with an elongated skull, a feature that some researchers believe to be a sign of Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is a genetic condition that affects connective tissue, which provides support for the body and organs. Marfan syndrome can damage the blood vessels, heart, eyes, skin, lungs, and bones of the hip, spine, feet, and rib cage. This Marfan syndrome is an illness attributed to the incest relationship between his parents, which resulted in this genetic disorder in him. In 2020, DNA evidence conducted by a team of scientists gave a detailed examination of King Tut's mummy. This was done using advanced DNA techniques, and their findings were published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. The examination revealed traces of Plasmodium falciparum, the most deadly of the malaria parasites in his system. 
This was considered a groundbreaking discovery as it provided another theory depicting that the young king might have suffered from severe malaria which led to his death. This same DNA study revealed that the young king had been infected with multiple strains of the malaria parasite, which also suggests strongly that he must have suffered from repeated outbreaks of the disease over his lifetime, which of course was short, and this could have led to a weak immune system that made him more vulnerable to other illnesses. According to reports, malaria was predominant in ancient Egypt. The Nile River, with its annual flooding, created an ideal breeding ground for the female Anopheles mosquitoes, which are the primary vectors for the transmission of the disease. Inferences were made about fevers, which could have been malaria fevers. The presence of the disease at that period made it possible to believe that King Tut could have contracted and finally succumbed to it. These and many more are the theories and hypotheses regarding his death, as researchers and experts continue to investigate the life and death of King Tutankhamun to gain a better understanding of the circumstances surrounding his passing. King Tut's passing is a mystery that is still being unraveled. Let's hear what you think about this tragic passing in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing and informative content. Thanks for watching.